Hello, welcome everyone to the Q&A session from Call for Curators. Thank you for joining. Um, I'm very excited to host uh, this Q&A session because it's one of the most unique opportunities available for the practitioners around the world. And although a lot of information is available on our website or the website of Onassis Foundation, we acknowledge how important it is for our community to have a possibility to ask direct questions. So that's why we organize this Q&A and today uh, we'll be talking about the Onassis uh, Artist in Residence program. And I'm happy to present our guest, uh, Nefeli Mirodia, uh, the head of Onassis Air, who will tell us more about the open call and all the details. Hi, Nefeli, thank you for joining us. How are you? Hello and thank you for the introduction. Uh, so I'm Nefeli Mirodia, I'm the head of Onassis Air, which is the artistic research and residency program of the Onassis Foundation. It was established in 2019 by the Onassis Foundation. And um, for the ones of you who don't know, Onassis Foundation is a public benefit foundation based in Athens that um, uh, the um, it supports for the last 40 years now uh, initiatives in uh, health, uh, culture, and education. So we're part of a broader um, uh, network of, uh, of programs. Uh, Onas Foundation has also established in Athens the Onassis Tegi, which is the cultural center of um, of the Onassis Foundation that uh, presents host theatrical performances, dance, music, large scale digital exhibitions and visual arts exhibitions. Um, the foundation also offers yearly scholarships to for academic um, studies. And we also support a lot of initiatives that have to do with health, uh, uh, hospitals and support to the um, to health. In uh, apart from our um, headquarters in Athens, we also support projects internationally, and there's also an office at uh, the United States, and we're in like supporting a lot of initiatives in New York and LA. Uh, when it comes to the program now, uh, since the beginning of this program, we really focused on supporting uh, artists artists and other art practitioners, curators, um, in order to support the artistic part, artistic part of their of their research, like with the research part of the of their projects. So one important thing is that we do not require the people who are involved in the program to present the final outcome. So we really emphasize on artistic process, on the research, and not in final production of a work. But of course, we're there to support also the next phase when something comes out of the program. And we offer opportunities for artists to present their work within our, our institution. So uh, just to ask right here, uh, the production is not obligatory part of the residency, but it is possible. So if someone is willing to produce and present, uh, they are allowed to. Of course. So we have some opportunities during the residencies for presenting work during, during the open days. It's just it is not a requirement to actually present the final work. It could be an in-progress work. Um, and uh, the open days work like open studios, they happen once a month, and this is a format that is really an opportunity for the uh, participants to showcase their work, to also receive feedback on their in-progress work. Uh, sometimes it's also a useful way to invite other curators uh, to, to see the work and start imagining how this could be maybe uh, be toured, like co-produce, like find other funding opportunities. But right. also we always like for the projects that are developed within the residency, we also look into opportunities of presenting them uh, within our, our programming. Awesome. Uh, well, I will have more questions, but first, um, Maybe let's go through the introduction about the program itself and then talk about eligibility, 
and selection procedures and all other details. And I would like to remind everyone that by the end of the presentation by Nefeli, um, everyone can ask as many questions as you need uh, and engage into the conversation by using this chance to talk directly to Nefeli. And also this meeting uh, is recorded and will be reshared on um, our social media channels and published on our website. So please Nefeli, go ahead with your presentation. And um, I will also ask everyone to mute themselves if possible, please. Um, so we avoid any extra noise in the recording. Thank you very much. And yeah, let me so see. Uh, so this year's program, the open call we have just announced, is called Tailor Made Residences Program, and it's open for applications for residences starting in September 23 until June 24. So practically, the Tailor Made Residency is the result of a year of uh, like you know the four, out, out of the four years of our existence. We have been experimenting with different ways of accommodating and supporting the artistic needs. And last year, we decided to take this um, a step further to invite also previous participants of the program to co-write with us the new open call. So we came uh, together and we asked what is needed now, today, what kind of program is the program you would need? After like two years of pandemic, this, things have changed. So after like uh, like since our beginning of the program in 2019 things have shifted so the program this is the result of this collective uh, process where previous participants were invited through a series of assemblies to contribute and uh, discuss with us and co-write with us this open call so as the name says it's a tailor-made program we tried to to leave a lot of flexibility there. Um, we have opened 24 uh, new, new positions for residencies uh, between this period that could last from a month and up to three months. Um, and uh, the, the theme, the, the focus, how this uh, months will be saved, will be co-designed together with the participants themselves. Uh, one thing that I want to emphasize is that uh, what we're looking for is for um, projects. Projects could be in the beginning of their, like, you know, in the research phase, it could be in the development, or it could be an opportunity for someone to actually finalize the project that they have already started working on. Uh, but for us, the important criterion is criteria is how urgent this pro project is, why this project needs to be developed now, and also how is this connected to Athens. Just to clarify this, um, it doesn't mean that we're expecting these projects to be about Athens. We don't expect them to be about Greece. We don't expect them like thematically to, but somehow we need that the participants who apply realize what is the specific uh, context that they will be joining uh, and also realize the ethos of the program. But if you allow me, I would like to share my screen. So I'll go a little bit uh, fast through our um, through our uh, open call and uh, emphasize some important points. So let me, this you can find in a link that I will share with you in the chat. So this is the PDF that explains how this year's open call will work. Um, there is not a specific uh, theme for the call, but as I said, uh, I'm sorry. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can see it perfectly. So there's not a specific um, theme for this year's call, but there are some overarching things that are, we're interested in. Uh, and I add here, like we're interested in the locality of the program, like, why this project needs to be developed in Athens and not in Berlin or in New York or somewhere else. Uh, the collectivity of the program, I will explain later, but practically the way Onassis works is a meeting point for 
cross-disciplinary thinking and experimentation between art professionals. And this means that it's an environment and it is for people who are willing to be part of a collective environment. It doesn't mean that we expect uh, like the collaboration in the project, uh, in the like uh, basis of the project, but we expect people uh, willing to be part of collective moments, exchange between uh, between them, and very often also uh, being part of uh, like collective activities. So human rights, democracy, um, mental health are things that are very important for us as a foundation and we'll be focusing on in the next years. So when we receive projects that have to, to do with these uh, themes, this is something that could be also a great opportunity for us to further involve in our programming and present within the Onassis Cultural Center and, and the other initiatives of the foundation. Um, this is, uh, as I explained, that this was co-written by a group of uh, previous participants. And um, actually, we invite also a group of previous participants to select who are the projects that will go to the next phase. So the tailor-made residency is, uh, it will last from for a maximum of three months with a between one and three months. Its residency, as I said, will stem from the participants' needs its time. And um, it can be from practitioners from any medium or expression or discipline from anywhere in the world. There's no age limits. There's no academic requirements. It's just for people who need the space, focus time, and uh, an environment that can create stimulating conversations in order for them to kick off, further develop, or finalize their projects. The people who are involved, as I said, must be interested in for moments of exchange and collective study. An important thing to mention, in, mention is that Onassis Air does not offer individual studios. So if you're looking for a place to isolate, to lock yourself and focus on your research project, probably this is not the right environment. There are a lot of like moments where people work in the same um, co-working space and they serve facilities. Um, we offer for all participants a series of professional development activities like mentoring sessions, per presentations, feedback sessions. Um, we also have a, an extended program of um, uh, introducing the artists to the local scene, to the, par the participants to the local art scene. We organize site visits in other institutions and art spaces. And we organize also uh, networking opportunities with other artists, arts, arts professionals, and curators in Athens. Um, a thing that is expected is an offering back. So because we really want to emphasize this collective character of the program, every participant will be invited at some point during the residency to offer something back to the Onassis Air community. This is uh, really up to them to decide what kind of offering this could be. And it can be something that relates either to their practice, to their methodologies. It could be a skill sharing workshop a presentation of a work, a curated discussion, a series of screenings, or whatever they see fit every time. Uh, going now to the details of what we offer. Um, so the resources, there is an individual uh, a research fee of 1,300 euros per month. Uh, and additional to that, there is a production, a small production budget, as I said, this, um, this opportunity is not for production of final work, but we do offer a small budget for any needs like, uh, you know, maybe expenses for short trips, uh, for materials, renting of equipment, maybe offer a small fee to a third party that will be involved in the project. For people who do not come from Greece, we also cover travel expenses, accommodation, uh, we have some co a collective budget that we use for invitations to other practitioners for workshops, for uh, talks, presentations and stuff. These are collectively decided coming from usually from uh, 
proposals of our participants, but also the Onassisor team comes up with proposals of organizing this type of, um, of sessions. Uh, we have a restaurant and we often offer meals in um, as part of the workshops we organize. Uh, opportunities to engage, engage here with the local scene, uh, access to uh, digital equipment, so we have our own inventory with digital equipment, and we have an important uh, growing library of books that is available for everyone to, to use and borrow during the residency. Of course, given the fact that we're part of the Onassis Cultural Center, we also offer opportunities for, for the participants to, to follow the events. We offer free access to all events, performances, workshops, and other activities of the Cultural Center and in general, the Onassis Foundation. Um, this is our beautiful space. We have a very nice, um, atrium like where we do a lot of events open air screenings the good thing with Athens is that we have good weather pretty much all year round so we very often use the outdoor space as well to organize events as I said when it comes to spaces uh, we do not offer individual artist studios but three large uh, um, co-working spaces where artists can uh, spend time and uh, we can also offer, we have access to some of the rehearsal spaces of the Onassis Cultural Center of Onassis Tegi, and also to a recording studio fully equipped uh, on the building of uh, the Onassis Cultural Center. So when it comes to things you need to consider before applying, um, I've already uh, said some of these things, but you should be available for an interview. I will explain now also the selection process so you will realize. But uh, the interviews will take place in mid May, from May 8th to May 18th, with the Onassis Air team. Uh, it's important to understand that we need a full commitment to the residency for the selected period uh, because of the collective. Uh, uh, part of it, it's important to have your presence here. There are sometimes projects that need to have um, to do site specific work, work, uh, you know, field uh, work, which means you wouldn't be here the whole time. But we expect at least that the uh, most part of your residency should somehow be connected and should be you should be present in Athens. You're expected also to offer back, as I said, something to the air community and participate in the open days, which is a series of monthly events that work as open studios. As I said, the presence in these um, in these events is not about presenting a final word, but mainly for you to use them as a way to present your research, the project in whatever phase it is at the moment, and receive feedback invite people to see and start like imagining how this could be realized. Um, so now the selection process, did you have a question or so I like, go on? I'm okay, I'll continue. So when it comes to the, um, to the selection process, uh, there will be three phases. And I think it's very important to explain how this works. I think it's also a quite unique way of um, of choosing um, the of of choosing applications. And we've done this um, since the first year. We really uh, insist on inviting the previous participants to select, and also do it in an anonymous way so that we avoid nepotism and. Um, being as transparent as possible. So the selection process in the first phase will happen uh, from eight previous participants of the program that will go, that will review the answers to four specific questions and uh, that I will explain in a bit. Uh, this phase, as I said, happens completely anonymously. The um, the Onassis Air Fellows, previous Onassis Air Fellows will not have access to your names, they will not know uh, your bio, they will not see any work samples, but actually they will see the answers to these 
four important questions. I'll go now down to the four questions and I'll explain the rest of the, um, uh, the two phases later. So the first question is what will your focus uh, uh, of the research, the project or the activity during your SCB? Uh, and you should also include the proposed title for your residency in Athens. Uh, the second question is how would this residency be urgent in relation to your practice? So we would like, first of all, to understand what kind of project you want to describe as clearly and concretely as possible. And also how, why is this red urgent at the moment in relation to your practice? Uh, the third question is how does this relate to the locality of Anasis Air? And we approach locality here not only regarding Athens, but the broader region. It could be a project that relates to the Mediterranean, to the southern periphery, or in general, like you know, the Balkans. Onassis Air Athens is part of a larger um, network of or like locality that could be urgent, and it would make sense for us to to develop this project here. And finally, is what is uh, proposed something that you could offer back to the Onassis community? Um, so these are the four questions that the, um, the first round of, um, of selection will go through and people will decide uh, if this, the application will go to the next, uh, to the next round. These are the selection criteria that I find super important and I think you should really look into very carefully before you write your application. Uh, the relevance and urgency of the proposed project. If Onassisere is being a suitable environment for your project to flourish, I, rem I remind you again that this is a space that needs collectivity. So if it's about a very... Uh, a project that needs a very focused and uh, isolated environment, probably this is not the right place for you. Um, the awareness of the context of Athens and the wider region in which the city is situated, and the understanding of the collective ethos of Onassis Air and the aims of the tailor-made residency. So willingness to be part of a, of a bigger community of uh, artists and art professionals, willingness to offer back, uh, sharing an ethos of uh, exchange, of um, an environment of peer-to-peer -peer feedback and uh, horizontal way of, of existing uh, for us are, are very important. The second phase, uh, we will then, uh, after we have the short list of um, of the applications that pass through the first round, together with the UNASER team, together with uh, Sepaki Anjama, who is a curator uh, from London and Vascos, which is an artistic collective in Athens. Um, we will go through the shortlist applications, and then we will, of course, take uh, really the time to go through the like uh, all the artistic. Uh, material like the work samples, your biographies, your CVs, um, and decide what we would like to, how we would like to, to proceed. And in the final phase, there will be a very short, short list of around 30 applications that pass to the next round. And these 30 applications will be also interviewed and, um, and we will um, announce all the final results by mid-June. Uh, we will try to even notify people much earlier, but the last deadline we've given to ourselves is June 12th. Um, so the application form, very quickly, you will see this when you go into the form, but you will be asked to provide your personal details and contact information, a title for the project, a short biography, uh, your CV resume as a PDF attachment. You will also ask to define what is your preferred residency period and also the number of months, if it's for one, two or three months. Please note that in cases, for example, that we have too many applications for September, November, but there is an application that we would like 
to support, we might come back to you during the interviews and propose an alternative uh, period of time or a different length of uh, residency in case we cannot accommodate uh, the months proposed. But this is something we do in terms of like flexibility. We're also uh, discussing with the participants who are shortlisted and are being interviewed uh, other possibilities. So important dates, uh, you will find them here. The open call is very important to mention closes on Monday. It's Monday noon, so noon Greek time. So please be careful if you wish to apply, try to finalize this process beforehand. We will not be able to accept any application after this, uh, any, this time. Um, and these are here are some important uh, frequently asked questions. Um, one very like one of the questions we have been receiving, so I will emphasize on that, is if we accept uh, collectives or collective applications. The answer is yes. We will be selecting projects, so it could be a collaborative project. In case it's uh, it involves more than two members of a collective two people we will be only it will be only possible for us to host up to two in this case it's important to mention that you should uh, fill out only one form so it should be one form focusing on the research on the collective project but in the biography you should add the names of the of the two participants that will be part of the now, a client will like to be part of the program. In that case, both of the participants will receive a fee. And that's why also given our um, uh, restrictions when it comes to accommodation, that's why we've only, we had to, to put this limit to two representatives of its collective. Um, what else? Uh, we, it's a wheelchair accessible space uh, and we accept applicants from all uh, backgrounds, and we try to ensure participation of the widest race of participants. As I said, the working language of the program is English, so everything in the application should be in English. It's a program that tries to find a balance between uh, local participants and international, but given the fact that it is an international program, English is a working language. Um, as we said, we cannot offer individual studios, uh, but we often uh, try to find other spaces to accommodate some more special needs when it comes to recordings, rehearsal studios, maybe more of a dirty space to produce um, work. Uh, we do not have an infrastructure for childcare or to accommodate partners, but uh, again, depending on the short list in case uh, we will examine, examine during our interviews case by case, and if there's such need, we'll try to find solutions, but we don't know, we don't have like an official infrastructure that um, accommodates uh, partners or childcare or children. Um, I think this is pretty much it. Uh, I'll just stop here. And in this PDF that you will find online, you will find here the application for where you will be asked to fill out all these details. And I will stop now and uh, maybe open up to questions from our audience. Nefeli, thank you very much for this profound presentation. Uh, for all the details and information, that's uh, very much appreciated. And I think we already have questions in the chat. So I will first start with those questions that I posted already. And afterwards, if anyone else has more questions, please uh, either drop them in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself and just talk. So our uh, first one is from Alexandre Murucci. And Alexandre is asking, um, that, hi, I'm from Brazil. Uh, in the possibility to build the work, it can be donated to some institution in Athens. Since it's very expensive to bring it back to Brazil by the customs taxes, uh, it could be a counterpoint. Yeah, so. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, the quick answer is yes. First of all, I wanted to mention that um, Onassis Foundation has its own collection. So often some of the projects that are developed when they're like physical objects could be acquired and, and remain with the Onassis collection. But also we're happy to figure out other opportunities or like connect you with museums or other uh, art um, organizations that have collections in Athens and we, we could, uh, yes, find ways to donate some of the work to, to an art institution in Greece. Great. Um, and the next question is, uh, what do you think is the main conclusion of all the ex-residents meetings with the institution in comparison to pre-COVID residencies? It's from Luis Garay. So, I mean, that's a very long answer because it's a process we've been part of for almost a year with the previous participants. What we've noticed is that when we started this program together with my colleague Az in 2018, when we came together before, even before there was an actual program where we had to design it, uh, the main, um, we have been asking a lot of uh, un, like artists and art professionals, well, what do they need? And back then what they said, the most like popular answer was, of course, money. But the second was time, time outside of production. Uh, most of the people we were talking to were overwhelmed, overworked, because in order to survive through their art practice before finalizing one project they had to start three or four projects uh, what we realize now after the community meetings three or four years later is that actually artists are longing again to go back to more production opportunities for opportunities to be with others you know we have spent a lot of time of isolation and also opportunities to really uh, showcase their work and um, be part of like open days and like have opportunities to share with the broader audience and other uh, art professionals their work. So that's why this call for the first time has also this element available, like the opportunity to produce work and also the opportunity to showcase your work through these open days that we have started this year. Great. Um... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Um, then the next one is from Christina Stavkapolu. I'm sorry for mispronunciation. Um, how flexible are you with the period of the residency? For example, if I choose the slot of February to April, and then I realize that September to November is more convenient for me, is it possible to change it or not? In general, we are quite flexible, as I said, like this is exactly the idea behind this program, especially for um, artists, curators, art professionals who are based in Athens, uh, because we try some pilot residences, tailor-made residences the, this year, we can be even more flexible because we don't have to, to stress about accommodation or um, flights. So it has happened that someone, for example, would like to do a two-month residency, uh, but they prefer to do it part-time. So we split a little bit like, you know, the the or like we extend it to three months, which are not full-time residencies, or in some cases, something else might happen and we can push a little bit like a month later or something, re the residency. When it comes to artists and art professionals coming from abroad is a bit more tricky due to the limitations of housing. So we cannot host like, 10 people at the same time. So there it's a bit more tricky, but again, whenever something comes up, we try to be flexible. Uh, as I said, during the interviews, we will also discuss, maybe you select something now that in two months from now, when it's the time of the interview, things might have shifted. So we can also discuss again uh, for the short listed applications and rethink a little bit the timeline. Thank you. Uh, next question is from Andrea Samoila. And the question is, can you support us with finding potential local collaborators like archives, museums, linguists? And do you consider only projects that are directly related to human rights, democracy, and mental health? 
for the first part, definitely, yes, this is exactly what we're doing. Also, as I, I mentioned, um, ONASA's foundation has a big pool of uh, scholars, of uh, uh, scientists, like experts, art professionals, other people who have received scholarships, and we are very often work with them, but also we're in, we're in touch with um, with other institutions and whenever we have the chance we can connect the it's a big part like this kind of uh, uh, professional development and mentoring and networking is a big part of the program we do this um, through regular meetings with its um, participant and the second question uh, which was a god i forgot can you repeat sorry sure the question is do you consider only projects that are directly oh, yes. related to human rights, democracy, and mental health? Uh, not at all. As I said, like there's no specific things. These are just some generalist um, uh, focuses, like, but many more, like rituals, crafts, uh, you know, uh, urban versus uh, rural uh, life. These are just some overarching themes that the NICE Foundation is interested in. But it doesn't mean that the the project should be limited uh, to these. Like you know, also identities, uh, ecologies. These are themes that are have been uh, who have been with us for years, for the last sure. years. Thanks. And then we have some hands raised. Uh, first is of Lander Lee. Please go ahead with your question if you still have one. Hi. Yes. Thank you. Um. It it kind of builds on um. And Andrea's first question, which is before and maybe during the residency, I was hoping to meet with artists in other um, like areas, like other Balkan countries as well. And like, uh, so I was wondering if you have connections with art centers, residencies, and other cities and countries around the region that you'd be able to like put me in touch with. So if, when I go, I could meet with artists instead of trying to make all the arrangements, you know, first introductions myself and stuff. So thank you. Uh, again, the answer is uh, yes, of course, it really depends on the context, the country and the type of research it's time, but in general, ONASI's uh, stay here, the cultural uh, center is part of more than 10 international uh, networks and we have partners from many different countries. And even if there is a specific case that we do not have a connection, I think we're always willing, uh, given the fact that it's another cultural institution to write an official letter and ask for like, you know, uh, a support for a specific project, connect you with somebody there. And in general, like we're open to do that. But yes, there's like a big network of uh, institutions we've been collaborating for more than 10 years now through our uh, European and international networks. And we're always happy to connect you with the colleagues in these institutions. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. And next question is from Nikita Raskazov. Nikita, please feel free to unmute yourself. Hello, uh, thank you for introduction. Uh, my question was about uh, the force uh, question in the application form uh, about what can you give to Anasis uh, residences and colleagues. And I wanted to ask if it needs to be directly tied with the subject of the project I propose, or for example, if I do some, I don't know, curatorial research, but I'm a musician or some artist and I propose something around it, it's possible as well. Uh, the second uh, is correct, which means it shouldn't be, it's not necessarily, it hasn't, it doesn't have to be connected to the specific research project. It could be anything, it could be something you're very good at, like, you know, I'm a, I have, I have this project, but I'm also a great sound editor. Who would like, I would like to offer a three hour masterclass for very basic tips on how you do sound editing. So it can be anything, it should necessarily be connected to your uh, current uh, like the project or the project you are applying with. It's more of a way of um, uh, exchanging and sharing something with others. Thank you. And a small technical question I had is that um, in this P uh, PDF file, which opens uh, on the website, which you just presented, uh, there is um, how to apply place and then uh, it is said that we need to register in the, into Anasis directory and uh, I have an account there 
but I don't see anywhere a button because uh, when I try to apply to like push apply in this uh, web page of the residency, it throws me to that PDF file. And that's kind of... Uh, uh, I, yes, I, you, should, you should go, I'll just show this because it might be confusing. You should go to the last page of this big PDF and you press application form, click here. And in that case, you will go directly to, I don't know if you see this. Yeah. So this is where you you need to go. So through this PDF is, is where you find the form. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'm not able to unmute my hand, so I guess I'll just dive in. <laughs> sure. Moape uh, from Zambia. And my question is, um, slightly uh, similar to the earlier question on the flexibility of a residency period that might be allowed. So for instance, if I was to have in my application indicated um, interest in say a three months uh, residency period, and then the, the review and uh, application assessment finds that my, my application is compelling, but they can only offer be a shorter period like a month or two months on account of a budget or to allow other um, uh, potential candidates to be part of the residency period is that um, an alternative that could be offered to reduce the period of residency from say three down to two or even a month thank you uh, yes practice Basically, as I said, this is something we discuss in case by case at the last phase of the of the residences. If we see, for example, because of the limited resources that we cannot offer to everyone a three month residency, we might come up with an alternative proposal and uh, see if we could somehow support part of it. And uh, also uh, what we do often is in case we cannot, you really need like three or four months or even more, uh, that uh, what we can do is very often we write um, letters of support and you could also, you know, we could help you find additional funding for, for some of the projects that need more time. Okay, I think we can move on with next questions and also slowly close the session because um, we are really running out of time. Um, so Narimane Abul Sud is asking, would you please provide more details regarding the interviews format? What subjects and inquiries will be addressed? Uh, would you offer help with the visa application process to those coming from outside of Europe? Uh, so for the interview, it's just in a discussion base uh, between the team uh, of Anastasia and the applicant. It uh, it and it's more of a like for us to clarify and understand better the needs of the of the project, just to make sure that it's something we can accommodate. Uh, but it's uh, it's not something uh, like there's not a very strict uh, structure of interviews. It's more of a discussion format, I would say, uh, focusing on the project and the needs. And uh, it's a way for us to start understanding better if and how we can support uh, the specific project. Uh, when it comes to visa application processes, this is uh, something that happens usually with the, like its applicant, uh, they ha has to apply on their own. But what we do is that we often first can write uh, an email to the local embassy and inform them so that we can facilitate the booking of an appointment process. And we also share some official letter to the embassy that always facilitates, like, you know, it provides, makes it easier to provide the, the visa. Um, yes, that's it. Thank you. And uh, there was another question from Yen. Um, I would love to send my questions. Yeah, if I apply as a duo and I'm fluent in English, but my partner is not so fluent and I can help with this issue and like translate, um, yeah, assist my partner, would it still be eligible? Uh, so 
I guess it's about the, the language barrier. So if one of the partners of a collective, members of a collective is not fluent in English, can they still participate together or not? Uh, uh, well, we, we didn't have this before. I mean, I guess it's possible. I can imagine that when uh, you're in an environment for one or two months or three months that you cannot communicate with others in a collective environment, this might be challenging. So I would just reconsider again, not so much because it's not allowed, but it might create, you know, probably it might mean not the best uh, environment for for them to be around because they might feel, feel excluded from specific uh, like collective activities. But it's, Yes, I, it's not that it's not possible, it's just it will be challenging or tricky, I would say. And I go through two last questions, um, and I think we will uh, start closing the session. So um, the question from Putri Harbia, can you give, uh, can you give more explanation regarding the Onassis community? So the Onassis community, if that's what I is that understand well, is all the people who have been part of the program. I'll share with you a link here. Uh, practically because um, since the beginning, we tried to change the notion of, uh, of the residency where you go to a place, you spend a couple of months, then you say goodbye and they never see you again. <laughs> So we really try to, to, to change this and uh, uh, we say and we mean it and we have done it many times during the last four years that once you are supported by Onassis Air, you become part of a, of a community of Onassis Air fellows that are welcome, always welcome to come back, use our resources, ask us for support for future projects. And whenever we have the chance, there were many times that we have invited people for a second residency. Sometimes people ask support in kind, like people might need a rehearsal space or equipment or just passing by Athens for a couple of weeks and it happened that we could accommodate accommodate them or offer working space. So that's what we mean is that uh, we believe in this long-term relationship with artists. So every person who has been part of the program since 2019 onwards are still is still invited and welcome to come back and um, be part of the residence. So uh, if you're selecting, if you are here, you will be able to meet and interact with many more people, like not only the ones that are currently doing the research, but also the, all the previous participants that might be around using the spaces and uh, just like being part of the collective uh, activities. Awesome. I think also the fact that this concept of current residency was um, was created in collaboration with previous fellows. It's some sort of a proof of the level of involvement of the fellows into the entire process. And that's pretty fascinating. And the last question is, um, what do you mean by the urgency of the project? So I think this is obviously very subjective. Uh, I just, uh, what I mean is that if, uh, I would just give an example to make it more clear. Like if you have, a, if you're a painting and have a, a painter and you have a, a studio practice and I don't know, like you just need more some time in the studio uh, making paintings, a series of paintings that you have started in 2010 and you just continue now, probably it's not the most certain like project that we would invite to host right now in Athens in 2023 in a collective. Uh, so I think the urgency is very uh, subjective and uh, we understand this and it's really up to its um, uh, like a reviewer of the application to decide, but uh, somehow, the question that should be in your mind when you write this application is why do I need to be in Athens then to do this thing? Like if you can answer this, then it's, I think you have everything you need. Great. Well, thank you Nefeli once again for this very profound and detailed presentation and for all the answers. Really? 
Thank you for giving us the chance. Thanks to all of you who are here. It's uh, really nice to see that so many people are, are interested. And uh, if there's any other questions in the meantime, uh, you can always write an email at uh, air at onassis, uh, dot org. I added here. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited to to see all your proposals and your projects and hopefully collaborate with some of you. Yeah, thanks a lot for everyone who joined and engaged into this conversation. Uh, feel free to refer to this link of the recording and to all the information which is uh, published on the website of Call for Curators as well as on the website of Onassis Foundation and ask more questions if needed. You can also refer to us and we will forward them if needed um, to Nefeli or the colleagues. So uh, thanks a lot. And um, I wish you all good luck in apl applying for this amazing opportunity and you Nefeli with selecting the successful candidates. Um, have a great day, everyone. Thanks for being here. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much.